Well, this point, you I believe you did the accept the plea, and we'll, we'll enter the plea. All right. Yeah. It's his desire, if we haven't accepted it, that we do accept That's it. correct, Your Honor. All right. You are Mr. Brazier? I'm sorry. You are Mr. Brazier? Yes. Mr. Brazier, do you understand the maximum period of incarceration the court can impose for the line uh, with respect to the peace officer uh, involving an investigation of a violent crime is four years, two years for the line with the uh, investigation to a peace, peace officer. Do you understand that? Yes. And you reviewed the pre-sentence investigation report? Yes. Was factually accurate? Yes. Is it your desire I accept your previously tendered pleas? Yes. The record will reflect the court does, in fact, accept your pleas. Are you ready for sentencing today? Yes. Very well. Mr. Doty, what would you like to say on behalf of the Your Honor, uh, appearing before you is Mr. Brazier. He's 23 year old, years old. He's uh, engaged. He's the father of two children with one child on the way. He currently lives with his, well, he was at the time living with his uh, um, spouse to be in, in Detroit in their home. Um, she has had sense to move out because of the nature of these charges. She's received death threats. Um, they both received death threats before he had turned himself in um, to the nature of he's, they're going to kill his children, they're going to cut out the unborn baby from his daughter. Um, there's been a lot of trauma that has been delivered to, to my client and his, his fiance at this time. Um, so, so what we respect, that we the request that, honor that you would uh, accept the recommendation of the probation department for the 150 days in Macomb County Jail credit for 66 days served and the 18 months probation. And my client would like to speak on his own behalf, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. It is the obligation of this court in imposing sentence to consider punishment, rehabilitation, the need to protect society, as well as deterrent similar offenses, and individualized sentencing. Mr. Brazier, what would you like to tell this court? Um, one, I did turn myself in. Yes, I lied, but I was not in the right state of mind. Um, there was no way for me to prepare for a situation like that. I was I'm scared. Not, I was <laughs> I'm not totally clear on the situation. And the report is rather sketchy with respect to the situation. And I will fill your honor in on some little details. I appreciate it. Uh, but what it, the report suggests is that you had contact with the individual. Uh, the police questioned you regarding that contact. You didn't tell them the truth associated with the contact. <coughs> Then you once confronted with information that you were not telling the truth, you came forward and told them that you disposed of the body. I mean, that's all. That leaves a whole lot out there that's unaccounted for from the court's perspective. But they, what circumstances are you talking about? Um, well, when she died, um, we were, it was just random like I, from my like from my end of it what, what from, do you mean I was it? terrified literally from that point on I didn't know what to do I wasn't in the right state of mind for anything and I turned myself and they didn't present me with anything I after getting my thoughts together so did you explain how do. she passed I don't know exactly how she passed what caused her to pass I just know one minute she was cool. She was fine. She laid back for a minute. Next, next thing I know, she's just, she's, she was dead. I don't know what caused it. I did not cause it or anything like that. I reacted stupidly off of fear and panic like I've never felt before in my life. Literally. Who? Well, I mean, people are sitting around and somebody just passes. I mean, did you think about calling 911 or something like that? No, not at the time. Um, I we were smoking. We were on marijuana as well. So my it just my mental state wasn't in any like logical spectrum. I was just immediately just terrified. Like that's the only words I can use to describe so the it, moment. Is, it, it, are you telling me that you're stoned, she's stoned, you think she dies, and then you dispose of the body? Just like that? That was your choice? I sat for a minute and just, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I just did not know what to do. It's like... I mean, the first thing that came to your mind, I'm trying to understand with the limited information I have, that this person passed away in your presence. And your first thought is, well, I got to get My first thought was how 
bad it looked to start with. It's like, how, how do I explain like what happened? I don't know why she died or what it caused her to die. It, and just like, a lot of possible possibility just popped in my head, and I was just reacting off of just innate fear. Just I don't know. Literally, I don't do anything. I, I just didn't know what to do. Literally, I literally did not know what to do. I sat for at least 10 minutes sitting there. Like, what do I do? Who do I call? My kids are upstairs. We just got into this place after struggling for like two years to get it, and everything is falling down. I, I won't have any conversation in this course. <laughs> and I wish I could take it back. I would have called the ambulance, called her mom, because her mom's so sweet. Her mom is so sweet. That is no. <laughs> I wish I could take it back. Nobody been in the situation. At the very least, they would be able to be like, okay, this happened. Confirm this. And everybody has some sore peace right now. You know? But I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> it's not something. I, you know, like I said, in life, you, you, you try to mentally prep for a lot of situations. But when one that you just would never have even thought to happen just happens, and you're like, wow, immediately the first thing comes to your mind is everything about to lose, how it's about to affect your kids, your life in general. And then after that, how it's flipped when whoever, it, it, it's, it's like play, play telephone and change many times. Facebook, everything, just a lie hitting me at once. So I had to just take time and try to get my thoughts together because I was on panic mode ever since that happened. Her mom at one point talked to me, and I couldn't bring myself, but your daughter just died. What do I do? And I can't even explain it. What happened? I just can tell you my honest reaction. <laughs> Anything further? You know, on my client's behalf, you know, I can say this, that every interaction I've had with him, whether it's over the phone, uh, via Zoom, or, or personal jail visits, is the same reaction. I wish you could take it all back. And, and we know that's not possible, but if, if there's one person that might deserve to be able to take it back, he does, because he's shown nothing but regret, sorrow, and, and just the utter confusion on his own actions. You know, he, he expressed to me on multiple occasions, I can't believe I did what I did. I still can't believe it because I'm not that person. And I don't believe a lot of my clients because they're always just trying to get over, trying to decrease their time in jail or prison or whatever it might be. This gentleman's not one of those persons. Okay, well, Mr. Prosecutor. Thank you, Judge. And uh, Sarah Milton, Zian Foster's mother, would like to speak. I don't know if Your Honor wants to hear from me before or after she speaks. Um, they should speak first. Why don't you guys step over here? <coughs> Here are Milton. Ms. Milton, what would you like to tell me today? Zion. She just turned 17 in November. She shares her location with me everywhere she goes. She asks if she can go wherever I would allow her to go. There are yeses and there are noes because as a parent, you want to protect your babies. I have six kids. Zion is my oldest. All of my children look up to her. We were supposed to be planning her prom, her dress and colors. I'm still getting emails from the school right now for graduation pictures and just graduation. And now we can't do any of that because she asked me if she could go with Jalen 
And I said yes. Because I trust him. And I thought he would be responsible. But the fact is, is that it seems to me like he's, like he was hiding. He didn't pull up in my driveway. He pulled up in my neighbor's driveway. And he's pulled up in my driveway before. We've given each other a hug. I've spoken to him. He came that night and he picked my baby up by pulling into my neighbor's driveway and then parking in the front of my other neighbor's driveway. He called me. I didn't call him. He called me on the 5th when my baby didn't come home. He called me to say, I don't know why Zion would lie and put me into this. I haven't seen her in years. I haven't seen her in months. And I'm like, what? It wasn't too long ago that I saw you. And even knowing that my baby has been in contact with him, I kept going to his house. I just wanted him to tell me the truth. I stayed up for nights, for days, panicking and being so fearful. God, please don't let my baby be dead. Please, God, don't let my baby be just thrown away like she's nothing. These are the things that I prayed. I was fasting, my children not getting sleep, We're not eating, can't go to work. I'm a single parent. Everything that I do is for my children. Every ounce of money and time or whatever and energy is for them. It's to make sure that they're good. It's to make sure that they're surrounded by people that love them and protect them. And so, yes, Zion, you can go with your cousin who you have in your phone as Favo because he's your favorite on that side of the family. And to say, you panicked. Then why didn't you think about my baby? What if you were so high you didn't know she was alive and you just threw her in a dumpster in the cold without a coat? And if that's the case, that means that my baby was crushed in the process of how trash is taken and picked up and placed in a landfill where she will never be found. I will never know. I will never know. I won't get to see my baby again. And as far as the many times that I went to his house during the search, Your Honor, he helped me post flyers of my baby in his neighborhood on the corner of his house, the street that he lives. He told me, along with his mother, I would not lie to you. I know this has got to be really fearful for you, but I'm telling you, I have not seen her. I have not been around her. His mother said, my baby wouldn't lie to me. And so now everybody is suffering. My children are suffering and they have to grow up knowing that their cousin, that their cousin did something this awful and that their big sister isn't there anymore. And we have so many events and so many life, life changes that are happening now. My, my son came to his house and he didn't recognize him, but my son was so angry and he just knocked at the door and was like, is Zion here? Is Zion here? You could have came and said something. You could have called 911. You could have called your mom. 
You could have called relatives that are all around. Somebody could have helped. Somebody could have known something. But it seems like more than just a panic. It seems like you did something or you gave something. Because why, if you love her, if she says that she loves you and she always does, and you say that you love her, then why? How is it that someone that can love someone could just dispose of them in trash? Like she's nothing. Just and then come with me and post flyers and reach out to me and tell me. I don't know. I know you're looking for Zion, but I don't know. I haven't seen her. I haven't spoke to her. And I don't know why she would use me. Why well, lie? This is something that can't be repaired. She cannot be replaced. This cannot be rectified. And I will never, we will never have closure. And as much as I love you guys, as much as I love that family, you have caused such distinction. That it's hard to trust a family at all. And now my babies are even more isolated. Because how can I trust family when family is one who did this? I will never forgive you, Jalen. And it may not matter. But I hope. I hope that your children grow up without you so that they can be better. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Honor, I'm making an emotional argument. Nothing can follow that. But Your Honor should be aware of some of more of the facts. Right? Because I will be making an argument to exceed guidelines. And there's a basis to do so. January 4th, Zion went missing. She left to go to uh, an individual's home, didn't know who at that time. Uh, ultimately, of course, we learned it's Jalen Brazier to uh, smoke marijuana, as he indicates later. 15 days later, when he speaks to the police, excuse me, 14 days. It wasn't his panic that night, of course, that, that started this, but it's the 14 days after he pays for now before the court. January 5th, you've heard the statements he's making to Sierra. January 7th, there are text messages. And at this point, Sierra has gone public with her daughter missing. And she's suffering through scams. She goes to the city of Detroit on the 8th to pay somebody money because her daughter is allegedly being sex trafficked in a home. She's going to gas stations. People are taking advantage of her, not because of defendant's panic, but because of what he chose to do every minute, every hour, and every day after January 4th. January 10th, police confront him. He says, I haven't seen her. I haven't been to East Point in a year. January 14th, police confront him again with phone records. I haven't seen her. I haven't seen her since May. Police confront him again. He says he'll come in for a polygraph. Of course, he doesn't show. On the 18th, finally, they confront him. He says he'll turn himself in. And on the 19th, he does so with his lawyer, not Mr. Doty, another counsel. And he tells police, ultimately, although lying during the course of the interview, he eventually confesses that he did, in fact, see Zion that night, picked her up, brought her home. They combined their marijuana together, and they both smoked it. And somehow, when he came back to the room, uh, she was unconscious. Now, he didn't you know, claim to be affected in any way, but purported that it was an overdose. Said she was breathing faintly, and that's important for the court. He tells police, the only one with knowledge of the facts, his version, if you believe a marijuana overdose, is that she was breathing faintly and he panicked. 
He didn't check on whether she was still breathing when he put her in the trunk of his car. He didn't check whether she was still breathing when he drove her to a dumpster. The counsel. Yeah. My concern here is what you're suggesting is that this was murder. What I'm That's what you're suggesting is that this was murder, not the disposal of a body. Uh, and that's that's the prosecution's consideration. Your Honor, you're correct. And, and you're putting facts in here that are not before this court, and this court is not prepared to sentence on murder today because that's not before me. Correct in one way, Your Honor. Homicide is not the charge offense, correct? I am. Lying to the police that. absolutely is. Right? But that is distinct and different from the additional right. facts you're providing the Not court accurate, as to consideration that she was breathing when he disposed of the body. And that will go to one of the offense variables that I'm going to ask you, Honor. All right, well, let's get to the offense right. variable. So ultimately, he tells police where that dumpster is. Police take time to locate what company hauls from that dumpster, where the dumpster is dumped, what dump and landfill it goes to, and now 14 or more days after the incident, 15 days of lies and more, they find out that her body is unfortunately 75 to 100 feet or more below the surface. And the reason all of these facts are important, Judge, and they are before you, and I can present every police report, Your Honor, I can mark it as an exhibit if you prefer, is two things. Offenses, offense variables, of course, and the guidelines are suggested in nature now. They're not mandatory. Offense variable five has not been accounted for in this public order offense. Offense variable five is the psychological injury to family members. You've heard from Sierra about how devastating this has been, not only to her, but other family members. Offense variable eight is the transport or placement of a victim into a place of greater danger. A woman who's faintly breathing, thrown into a trunk of a car, buried beneath garbage, certainly is placed in a location of greater danger. Those are factors not considered within the public order guideline range, but they are to be considered by your honor when you make this decision, Judge. At the time I authorized these charges, I was aware, and as he sits before you today, you're aware these may be the only consequences he faces for the torture, the pain, and the suffering this family has to go through when they want to visit their daughter's resting place and they have to go to a, a way of the council. My concern is that I'm not sure I have the appropriate offense here based on what you're saying and that it, she was alive and put in a position that she ended up deceased. Murder should be the charge. And that's a decision that Wayne County Prosecutor but that's not, needs to make, Your Honor. But that is not a decision for this court because it has not been charged. Correct. And so I can't go into these guidelines and say murder is an issue here because it is not before me, and you know that as well as I know that. And this would come back tomorrow, should I even consider that? It will not be considered by this court. Understood, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor is permitted. What is here is absolutely perverted. I cannot believe what this family has been through. That is before this court. To suggest that somebody, what a sick society we live in, would would further complicate and injure the mother of this child by suggesting that the child was subjected to other things in, in an attempt to uh, procure finances from this person. It's perverted, absolutely perverted. But he's not responsible for that. And how our society goes on with that type of behavior, I am so sorry for what you've been put through. It is incredible. You're right, Judge. It's disgusting. But I can't change those things. You understand that. Those things are not before me. What now, let's get to the guidelines, Counsel. Yes, Your Honor. And what is before you, I believe the guidelines for what can be accounted are accurately scored. I believe Counsel for Defense said the same. So they're accurately scored as they're before me. Correct. Offense variable 5 and 8 are not available. Okay, well, I can't, I can't do that. But... In order to exceed guidelines, your honor is able to consider facts that are not accounted for in the sentencing guidelines, which is why I present this to you. I'm asking your honor to hold the defendant accountable, not just for his panic, but for what he did every day thereafter, for the lies he told, and for the suffering this family is going to have to deal with for the rest of their lives. 
right. Thank Donna, you, Counsel. 32 months to 48 months Thank for the Michigan you, Department Counsel. of Corrections. It is the obligation of this court in imposing sentence to consider punishment, rehabilitation, the need to protect society, as well as deterrence of similar offenses and individualized sentencing. What happened there, I have no idea. None. The demise of this poor young lady is information that I, I never will possess. Nobody will possess, quite frankly, is unique to your memory, which you did not share which you intentionally then put this family through unnecessary trauma, uh, despair, heartache, for no reason. By your own admission to this court today, I knew what happened to her, and I chose to conceal it, to perpetuate the false statement on this family, why they participated with the falsehood that you created, that she was out there somewhere. That's just incredible, absolutely incredible. I cannot do anything to remedy what occurred. I am so sorry for what has happened to you. But you need to be punished. As I indicate before each sentencing, it is the obligation of this court an imposing sentence to consider punishment, rehabilitation, the need to protect society, and deterrence from civil offenses. Your failure to be honest and truthful in preventing, I don't know, maybe uh, preventing f certain further pain and suffering from the family requires punishment. Uh, probation, you've recommended that he be afforded probation. That's not appropriate here. He's going to prison today. And the prison sentence here hardly reflects the injury that you've accomplished. The guidelines are appropriate, however, uh, under these circumstances and the court will stay within the guidelines. And I am only considering the facts that are known and presented to this court and are not in dispute. Other matters that have been brought to this court's attention for which there is no basis and would require a hearing are not considered by this court. Therefore, it is a sentence of this court that Mr. Brazier, you be remanded to the custody of the Michigan Department of Corrections for a period of 23 months to four years on count one and on count two. What's his credit? 66. On count two, uh, 66 days. Uh, on credit for 66 days. He's got a total of $136 state court costs. $130 crime victim right assessment, $250 circuit court cost, and Mr. Doty, your attorney fee is? 925 $975. you are entitled to appellate review of your conviction and sentence in this matter by way of application for leave to appeal. If you're financially unable to afford an attorney, the court will appoint an attorney to represent you. You have six months from date of sentence to request a court appointed attorney. You're being handed a form you should use if you want the court to appoint you an attorney. Do you acknowledge receipt of the form? My client is receiving signed the form, Your Honor. Bond is canceled. There's no motion. Uh, that concludes this matter. I wish you the best, and you have to be strong for you and your family. You have been, and I know you have been, and nobody can fully appreciate what you've endured. I wish you the best. Thank you, Judge. All set, Judge? All set.